it's November, which is my birthday month. So throughout the month, I'm putting out videos to so you guys can get to know me and my tasty movies a little bit better. And today we're looking at some of my favorite movie trilogies. Now, disclaimer, I define trilogy as three movies that were all planned out as one story. So if a movie got more entries years later, for example, Indiana Jones, which technically has four movies and soon to be five movies, those don't count. I don't count four or five because they were not planned out as the original story. I defined it where they went in with a plan and said, this is what we're going to do. Here's Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, each is a movie. So I'm only counting the first three films that tell the complete story. Or in the case of where it was a book series where it was three books, but it was made into two movies because the book was so long, I will only count it as one big movie. So let's get started. Number 10, Unbreakable. And what's interesting is this was a trilogy that wasn't even intended to be a trilogy until 17 years later. At least, I don't think it was where it was revealed that M. Night Shyamalan's movie Split was actually a secret sequel to Unbreakable, and there would be a third movie exploring what happened to Bruce Willis and Sam Jackson's characters after the first film. You know, Unbreakable came out at a time when comic book movies weren't very popular. They were still considered very niche, and the ones that we did get generally weren't very good. There were a few exceptions to that rule, but most of them weren't very good. And what's interesting that Unbreakable wasn't based on a comic book. It was an original story about a guy who discovers by accident that he has powers, and then you have Samuel L. Jackson, where his greatest superpower is his mind, and it's this intricate game of cat and mouse, as Samuel L. Jackson is very fascinated by uh, Bruce Willis's character because Samuel L. Jackson grew up reading comic books and worshipping the superheroes, and this guy comes along who's basically a real-life superhero because they went with a more realistic take on the story. We don't have a guy who flies, we don't have a guy who shoots lasers out of his eyes, we don't have a guy who can you know, punch everything in one punch, but we have a guy who nothing can hurt him. You know, you throw a baseball bat at him, the bat's going to break. And we have a guy who's basically invincible, but not in like a Superman way. And that was a really interesting way of doing it. And then you have Split, which was the opposite of the movie, which was a super villain origin story, as opposed to a superhero origin story. And they managed to keep this such a secret because you just go in and you think that it was a traditional M. Night Shyamalan thriller that was this escape thriller about this crazy guy with all these different personalities that kidnap these women and they have to escape. And then it turns out, no, he's a supervillain. This is in the same universe as Unbreakable. And we're doing a third movie that's going to combine these two. And I know a lot of people had problems with Glass, but I think it's because they went with their expectations a little differently than they should have. I think Marvel has sort of spoiled us into the expectations of what a superhero movie should be. Because these were never intended to be these big budget epics. I know, a lot, I know that everyone's big problem with Glass was that, oh, well, they're all in this asylum for the whole movie. And, you know, they don't ever get to fight everything. But none of those movies were ever like, I mean, I don't think he throws a single punch in Unbreakable. You know, these were never intended to be these big giant portal in the sky alien fighting movies. They were very much intended to be realistic in close quarters. So I think with that expectation of the way, I thought class was a very satisfying way of paying it off. And also James McAvoy's performance was just so good. I mean, they were all good, but especially James McAvoy, he was top notch. Number nine, Avengers. Technically, I'm cheating on this one because it's four movies. But like I said, it might as well have been three because Infinity War and Endgame, that's a two-parter movie. Infinity War ends, there's the intermission, there's Endgame. So, now it's interesting that they take all the build-up from the previous MCU films and they pay it off in the most epic way possible. All these characters that we've spent time with, each get their time to shine and work together and have witty banter back and forth with the big ending in the last movie where it's a very satisfying conclusion. And they did the impossible by having over 20 characters and not making it bloated delivering a satisfying payoff. Number eight, Hunger Games. Yes, because this was three books, not counting the President Snow prequel book that came out after the movies were done. But the story of the Hunger Games of Captain Severdian, that is three books, so it counts even though it was four movies. This came out at just the right time for me because Harry Potter had just ended like almost a year ago. You know, they had released the last Harry Potter movie and I was kind of wanting another franchise to get into, and this was the next big thing. And I really enjoyed the story. It was exciting. And also, Donald Sutherland is fantastic as the villain. I'm not the biggest fan of the ending of Mockingjay, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed getting to see these movies every year. They were fun. Number seven, The Dark Knight Trilogy. This has a riveting script, a complex, exciting plot, and presented a lot of new ideas about Batman. The dialogue is very well written and presents very complex ideas. The villains are also very well acted, and it made Batman more human than previous iterations. Number six, The Planet of the Apes prequels. The great thing about this trilogy is that you can root for either side, which is odd, because these are prequels to the original film, so we know that we lose. Like, we know how the original film ends, where, you know, the humans have lost. You know, the apes have enslaved the humans, but yet we feel sympathy for these apes, 
even though we know they're the bad guys. We know they're going to enslave the human race, but we feel bad for them, which was weird, but they did such a good job with it. And then in the third one, you got Woody Harrelson as the sort of villain, depending on who you root for. Honestly, you can root for either side, which is great. Fantastic trilogy with great plot and action and fantastic characters. Number five, the Captain America trilogy. Each of these films is fantastic, especially because they're more or less each a different genre. The first movie is a 1940s period piece with a likable character who's this ordinary person who just wants to do what's right. The second is this Tom Clancy-esque thriller that presents ideas about how much power by those in charge is too much and secret societies and inside jobs. And the third one just really shows why Captain America is such an awesome character. And you know, they don't really take sides with Civil War, but either way, Fantastic Trilogy, and if that had been the last Captain America movie, had you know, Avengers not happened, had Infinity War not even happened, still would have been a very satisfying ending. Number four, the original Star Wars trilogy. Duh. <laughs> the original was released just a couple of years after the Vietnam War, so the country was very pessimistic, and films of the time reflected that. They were gritty. They were violent. They were dark. They got films like Taxi Driver or Chinatown, where they're just violent for violence's sake and just very gritty and very dark. So to have this movie come out that was a throwback to serialized films from the 30s and 40s like Flash Gordon and was fed escapism with amazing special effects, and a, oh, at the time, amazing special effects, and a classic hero's journey story, which would be good enough on its own. If they had just done Star Wars, the original Star Wars, would have been a fantastic enough movie on its own. But then we get the sequel, which is even better than the original, especially because it was released at a time when sequels were considered box office poison, and it has one of the best twist endings in cinema history. And then you get Return of the Jedi, which closed out the arc nicely, and it had a lot of emotional weight and a very satisfying ending. Number three, The Lord of the Rings. Big budget epic, big battle scenes, complex themes of good and evil, power and corruption, creatively designed creatures, and it flows very naturally. It feels like a big 12-hour movie if you watch it back-to-back, -back, as opposed to time gaps. Very well-directed film. Everybody does a fantastic job. The special effects, everything still hold up. There's a reason Lord of the Rings is considered one of the best trilogies of all time. Amazon, do not ruin it with the TV show. You better do a better job than Peter Jackson did. Number two, Indiana Jones. Again, I'm only counting uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark Temple of Doom and Last Crusade. I'm not counting Crystal Skull or whatever this new one ends up being called. This was a throwback to Avenger series, much like Star Wars from the 1940s. This time with Spielberg as well as Lucas involved. It has amazing action, exciting stories, humor, and then bringing in Sean Connery as Indiana Jones' dad was awesome. Last Crusade is so good because their banter together is just awesome. And number one, How to Train Your Dragon. Mostly because there's not a single bad movie in this trilogy. I mean, most of these trilogies don't have a single bad movie in them, but these are all really good on their own. But I chose How to Train Your Dragon because these have heart, well-fleshed out characters, a well-fleshed out story, an amazing Hans Zimmer score. And the main character is mature as it goes along, and each movie ends on an emotional note. Especially because the DreamWorks sequels vary in quality, but this is one where every film is consistently good. Now, just because this number doesn't mean it's like my all-time favorite trilogy or anything, this is just kind of the ones I thought of off the top of my head. So, you know, take this how much you will. But anyway, these are some of my favorite trilogies, and I would love to know some of yours. And I will see you next time.